Nos County Talk, we are live with episode 51 of the Pavis Perspective podcast, sponsored by Better Bytes Computers. As always, you can find Better Bytes link in our description shortly after the video. And as well, you may be listening back to this on Spotify. So check out Better Bytes Computers for some fantastic computer repairs, second hand computers, or anything you may need. Um, obviously, this was supposed to be Thursday's um, Pavis Perspective, including a Bromley preview. Uh, that was pushed back after the sad passing of the Majesty of the Queen, which then resulted in um, the full Saturday fixture list being cancelled. Uh, we were unsure whether we would do this video today, but it has been confirmed by the National League and uh, I believe the National League actually before the EFL and Premier League, which is mind blowing that they've got the stuff together, have said that games will go ahead. And I think some some lower down the pyramid are going ahead as well. Um, tomorrow, I believe, is when football is back. Whether you agree or disagree with the postponement of the football, that's for you to decide. Um, we'll leave you to decide on that one. But it's happened. The game's, the weekend's done now. No no fixture. So um, how are you doing anyway, George? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, my dog's actually behind me here on the sofa, fast asleep. Brand new she dog. Is, she is snoring. I tried to move her, but she just jumps back up behind me. And if I put her in a bed, she just starts crying. So I felt kind of bad. So I thought she could make a, a debut tonight. I thought I'd just leave her to it. What She's chilled. Baby. She's chilled out. Will she last the full like 45 minutes? There's only one way to find out. So if you're listening back on Spotify and you hear some snoring, it's neither of us pretty yeah. much. Um, question tonight is actually one that, that I think is a big debate. It's going to split opinions. It's a big debate. What is Not what time you have your dinner at night. What's the correct time you have your dinner at night? Is it between five and six? Is it between six and seven? Between seven and eight or after 8 p.m.? It is a big debate. And I know some people, it depends what time they're getting from work or when their partner gets in. But what do you think, if you could have it, uh, you could choose the time, what's the correct time? Let us know. As always, we'll let you know as well. Um, Big break, George. Not a big break, but it feels like a big break with, with the build-up that was coming to the weekend and then obviously the game being off. Um, in those circumstances, it was a bit of a strange one. Yeah. The, the, for once, you know, we we usually used to see and not have, have games off due to poor pitches and other teams play at the same... Uh, are playing their games, I think, of Dover last season. I think of yep. King's name. This time, everyone... Yep. No one's played. So do you think that keeps it a level playing field? Uh, yeah, I, I think it does. Yeah, I, I don't really, especially with it being a Tuesday game, I don't really see it affecting things too much. Uh, it is very typical though, isn't it? Um, just as we get some good momentum going, that, uh, you know, there, there is a little bit of a break in there. But because it's not massive and, you know, we've had time to sort of, it's not like it's been cancelled an hour or two before kickoff. Do you know what I mean? It's It's, it's pretty much, I think, obviously, when, when the bad news did come out, I think it was pretty obvious that the games weren't going to be played at the weekend. So I think, you know, from that time then, people, you know, clubs had time to to prepare for that sort of thing. So things would have been put in place, training on Saturday and, and you know, matches amongst themselves and, and, and things like that. So, I'd, I'd, yeah, I don't think it is going to affect things too much. I, I think it is a level playing field, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, very shortly, I think a few hours after the news came out, maybe even earlier than that, maybe within within an hour, within an hour and a half, I think it was uh, a Stockport game on a Friday night. I think that was almost instantly postponed. And I think as soon as one game was postponed, I think you knew all of the EFL games were going to be postponed. Um, so like you said, and then National League would just follow suit. Um, so yeah, I, I think pretty instantly Luke Williams could have switched almost all his focus onto older shot and so could the players. Um, and I think we, we've got a manager that's going to be professional enough to to just say, look, that's going to happen at a later date. Forget about that now. Off we go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's, it's one of these that just, unfortunately, there's no, that, that there's no foreshadowing of any of this. And um, if you're taking reasons Four postponements out of, out of the question. I agree with you. It does seem like you know COVID season. Not so had really good momentum. It's cancelled last around last Christmas. We had great momentum. There were COVID cancellations, and uh, and then obviously the cancellation is due to water, uh, waterlogged pitches, which were ridiculous. And then now, nah, but yeah, I think the squad are the squad are more than capable of 
you know, pushing on with the game on Tuesday. And um, one thing I will say is that I looked at the fixture list up until Wrexham, and I did see the. I don't want to jinx this. I saw one of the only difficult, very difficult fixtures as Bromley. I know they lost four one to Dagenham, but I saw them as the most difficult fixture. Getting this out of the way and playing them at a later date, right now, I don't see it as a as a as a very I don't see it as as such a bad thing. I don't know. Get played? I think because it's at home, I think I understand what you mean about you know, they are obviously a, a good side. But for me, you know, at Medellin, I'd back not to beat anyone at Medellin. Literally anyone. Anyone in this league anyway. Um, so for me, for me personally, I, I'm I'm not really behind that idea. I, I think, I think we probably would have got a result against them, to be honest. Mm. I saw, um, well, I heard a bit of the Twitter spaces with, uh, with Ollie, who's taken over from, uh, from Lee. And I think there was Casey on there. Tom Williams and um, Rich. Rich from Notts County Stats, they were sort of saying that they see us taking anyone on at the minute. And yeah, yeah. It, I listened to that as well. It was quite a good listen, and I agree with that statement. I really do. Do you feel we could take anybody on right now? Is it? Um, yeah, confidence is obviously really high because the the last result that we've had. But for me, that, that performance against Solihull was tremendous. We had and we've just got so many options now. Like Jim O'Brien put a really good performance in um, against Dagenham and Redbridge. Bajrami didn't even make the start in 11, which to, to me, when I saw the lineup, and I wasn't alone. I really wasn't alone. Blew my mind. I could not believe that he'd played that well and he was dropped. Um, but then obviously Jim comes in and does, does a, a superb job. So it's sort of like we've got someone being dropped that has a fantastic game, but then the player that comes in sort of fills the space that he was playing. Has a fantastic game as well. And you, you, I mean, it must be hard for Luke Williams. It must be hard because he's got so many difficult decisions to make. But I, I think in, in respect, it's a good problem to have. And I feel like his man management thus far has been fairly good. It seems like everyone seems to be happy. So, Yeah. yeah I mean, it is early on in the season. Yeah, um, 100%. I don't know, having played that well, we picked Bajrami out as man of the match. You know, how, how long will that last? You know, if I was playing that well and I was being dropped, albeit Jim had a very good game against Dagenham, but he hadn't played that well before. So before he'd had that good game, is Bajrami sort of thinking, look, I'm playing like this and I've been dropped again? Or is he fully behind what's going on? I don't know. Um, in the long run, this com this competition for places is fantastic. Like, I'll take that competition all day if it means the squad stay that hungry. Um, who would like to see against Aldershot? Obviously, we'll go into a little bit later. I I think in a game we're looking to be completely on the front foot. I think Bajram is fantastic for because um, I think any little opportunity for teams to break on us, like Solihull, there were a few opportunities. He just completely just. He, he he mopped it up, didn't he? There was no he was like the the man in the middle that any loose ends he tied up. Yeah. The opportunities down the wing. Uh, I mentioned it in the post match against Solihull, where he just nudged the man off the ball and recycled the attack. I think that's good. I think Jim Jim I do think covers more ground than than Bajrami, so possibly that's why why Luke Williams had that thinking in the in the away game. But yeah, I do trust what his decisions are, and um, that brings me to a comment uh, a little bit further up that was asking is. Vincent available to play Tuesday? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no. No, he's not. Um, we both put a tweet out, similar tweet, similar times when it happened, that we were pretty pretty comfortable with Vincent going. Um, I questioned it a little bit. I thought someone might be coming in. The way we've gone on since that happened to Vincent, are you are you more than happy for him to, to stay on loan at older shot or would you have him back? I mean, he's, I think he's playing pretty well. Yeah, no, he is. He is playing really well. Um yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be pushed to, to get him back straight away. But I mean, if if something arises where, you know, we, we may have an issue or we feel like a void that needs filling and Vincent could fill that void, I mean, without a doubt. But with the way we're playing and the options that we've had, like you just said, I I don't really see a space for him. And I, I think, you know, like you just said, when we put those tweets out about, I mean, you said it makes way for someone. 
And I was sort of saying, I think we've got good options in midfield. And I took a couple of pelters from that. I mean, everyone everyone has different, different opinions, you know, that's football. But And then I was kind of looking at it and I was questioning myself, like, do we really have the options? And then like a few weeks later, there we are thinking we don't really need, I don't really need another midfielder now. So, you know, t- time's a healer, I think, in that regard. Yeah, they can game is saying you know, saying he wouldn't be fussed about having him back for now. I agree. I think let him keep let him keep playing, let him keep having some playing time. And if we, you know, if we can bring him back, that that's you know that's great. If we have the option to bring him back, um, and we do need him, or we get an injury or something like that, then then great. But at the minute, I mean, I was sure this is how crazy football is. I was sure three or four games ago. I was I was certain we needed another central midfielder. I don't even yeah. know if we do anymore. Mm. Like I, I've gone from the point of a few videos, a few videos ago, I was certain we need a central midfielder. If you look back on it, you'll you'll see me saying it. Then a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking possibly, and I'm completely switched off the idea of it. I don't think we do. I saw his link to the file central midfielder. Um, yeah. Was it Horton? And uh, I put it in our chat, didn't I? Um, yeah, you guys see we're linked with Horton from file. He scored 25 goals last season from midfield. That. I think he's like hot air blown up by an agent trying to get him a new deal or something like that. Personally, um, he's seen that clubs can spend money, and I just think that's a little bit of that. I don't necessarily. I might be wrong. I don't think there was ma- there's going to be massive amount of interest there because where does where does he fit in? No, I agree. I, I don't think he does. But that that would be one player I probably would if it was true. That would be one player I probably would say yeah, bring him in, even though he doesn't necessarily fit in. Purely for the fact if you're scoring 25 goals from midfield, that's that's like that's like Scott and Lang, that's almost Scott and Langstaff territory. It's incredible. That's an incredible number. Yeah. But other than that, unless they're going to be massive players for us, not for me. Let's not bring anyone in. Yeah. There we go on the same page. Look at that. We're on the same page one. It's lovely, that isn't it? You can't forget Ed Francis as well, you know. He put in a couple of good couple of good performances. At the start of the season, you know, it's not like he's he's a bad player. I, I I've always said I rate Ed Francis, so he's another good option that we do have in midfield, even though he's not, you know, he's not in favour at the minute. For me, he's currently bottom of the pecking order. Though, oh yeah, yeah, no, he used to me as well. But he's a good player to have at the bottom of the pecking order. I think exactly. If you'd have looked two, three, a couple of years ago, off the top of my head, I can't think. Midway through the first season, if someone could just remind us who like bottom of the pecking order midfielder would have been and we'll compare it. Because if Fed Francis is struggling to get any minutes, that's that's really, really good, isn't it? Um, for me, it goes Ed at the bottom, if I'm forgetting anyone. As in, I'm going to, I'm not going to include, I don't know, I'll include Austin in there because I think Austin is not as attacking as Ruben. I'd go Ed at the bottom, then I'd go, then I'd go Jim. Then I'll go Bajrami. Then I'll go Austin, then Palmer. Yeah, I think I think you probably pretty much got that smack on. And Austin, I love Austin already. Yeah, no, he's a great player, great player. And, and like you say, Palmer, he's just fantastic. I can't believe he's still playing for Knots, to be honest with you, in, in the National League. I could have, I mean, I know he came in and said he wanted to be part of uh, like a long term plan. Uh, and I think we, we heard that before of somebody else. Yeah, who not was bitter. that? Someone I'm, else. I'm not bitter. That. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. But um, you know, he, he's he. I'm surely he had offers. Like he had a, like he got player players player of the season and fans player of the season, didn't he? He was superb last season. So the fact they didn't get picked up for me from someone above is just mind boggling. He must really, he must really want to stay here. So yeah, what a player, Mike Palmer. Yeah, he's got he's got to be top. Casey saying that um, we've got four to five midfield options. Ruben can drop deeper if necessary. Which Ruben's work rate, I, I believe he could play anywhere in that midfield pretty much. Yeah. You know, he's he's shattered at the end of every game. Uh, if we need another body, he felt we need another body too. But it's hard to see how we'd fit anybody else in. Yeah, I I agree. And uh, Chris says only nineteen in the squad now though. Smallest squad I can remember, but easily the strongest we've had. I'm a big yeah. believer. I'm a massive believer and in having a not too small, we don't want a too small squad, a small squad that is strong. Now I'm not just saying this to wind people up. I think what Forrest have done is I would hate not to do that. I would hate not to go out and sign 20 something players. It's it's personally from not not a 
um, you know, a rival's point of view. I, th- I think if anyone went to sign 22 players, it's too many. And I it's think we're two, seeing... Two starting lineups, that is. Yeah, it is. Plus what they already had. I know they only retained 52% of the total minutes they played in the championship. Those, yeah, a lot of players went out. Zinc and Eagle went. A few others went. But if you're signing that many people, I don't think it can work. For me, 19. If, if you've got 19, was this the plan? You know, they've trimmed Lacey out of the squad, injury prone. Got rid yeah. of Cal. Yeah. Injury prone, injured currently. I think he's out for a month or so, a month and a half. Was that the plan? Was that the plan? There's not a player in that. There's not a player in that 19 now that I would be disappointed starting. Whereas a couple of years ago, there would have been people I'd have been disappointed starting. But there's not one now. Okay. You disagree? I don't know. I think there's one or two where you're thinking if they are starting, if they are starting, uh, <laughs> they took a boot to the head. Then um, if they are starting, you, you're probably thinking why are they starting over the next person. But I mean, if in, if injuries come through and things like that, I think. You know, on a long term, I'm not going to name any players. I am going to name some players. I think, you know, Rawlinson, he, I don't think he really fits uh, the sort of back three that we sort of have now. Do you know what I mean? I, I think it'll be important January, February. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But he, he well, does seem to be out, massively out of favour, doesn't he, under, under Williams? Well, you've got to be careful with how many games you have been backed up in this league because of pitches that aren't up to scratch. We've already had one postponement that's not to do with the pitches being up to scratch. So we're already one game now backed up. You expect this league on average three, maybe three, three cancellations, possibly. Um, so I think I think it'll be important. And I, but what what I'm saying is, um, I think I get what you're saying. That would, there wouldn't be players I'd want starting every week. But if there was an injury or a suspension, there's not a player that they're coming out. I think, oh no. Like that is going to significantly weaken us. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I, you know, I agree with that, and I think you know the thing with Rawlinson as well. From what I understand of his character and um and stuff like that, I can imagine him to be a really good guy to just have around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, very. I feel like he'd be like very motivating um, on match days and uh, at training, training as well. Also, I can't put my I can't put my finger on it now, but we've seen players in the past that have like come on as a sub that have been bit part, and they just don't care. You know what I mean? Like they just don't put their body on the line. They don't run because they know they're not going to get minutes. You know, if Rawlinson comes into the squad, you know what you're yeah. getting from him. Yeah, 100%. yeah. Warrior, yeah. He, could, he could come on for ten minutes, and he would put his body. He'd, he'd dive into tackles. He'd win headers. Yeah. He'd, he'd he'd risk like you know cuts to the head, winning headers, and um, and what else we have in this squad, which I don't think can be underestimated, is I feel like we've been building over the last few years. We've got players that can play in multiple positions. Yes, we've got what is it, nineteen players, twenty players in the squad. But, but we've got positions covered. We've got centre-back now at a stretch covered by Chickson, if needed. You know, we've got Aaron Demand playing. And would you say he's converted now to a right wing-back? Like, if, if things got really stretched, you've got, like, three right wing-backs you could possibly have if needed. Like yeah. Like, Neman, yeah. Adebayo rolling, potentially Brindley if, if, if he wanted to stay that system and playing. You've got an abundance of centre-backs. Like Casey said, you've got Ruben that could drop in at centre mid. You've got Bajrami that can play there. You've got Bajrami that can drop in at centre back. There's so many options. Ruben can play in the attack with with Langstaff. He can play sort of out wide. So I think the squad's so strong, and I, I don't know where where would bring anyone in. We've got loan options now, and I think we 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 used our loans pretty well last year. Bit too Pat's, well. Patterson was good. I like he was Connor too Parsons. Good. I like Connor Parsons, you know, but he just didn't get enough. He came at a wrong time. I, w- I watched him because he has a YouTube channel, I think, doesn't he? And yeah. He was explaining it and he was saying sort of, I think he came and he got COVID and then there was all the cancellations. He was good. Um, Richardson, let's be honest, he, for, for the majority, he was good. But I think we've finally got it right. So, there we go. Chris said, Kara's sub-appearance for Solo Hull epitomised as squad members coming in to carry out specific roles. Yeah, although he didn't make that pass... I think we did we give him a seven and a half, eight out of ten? Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. I give him a seven, yeah. Yeah. So he came in, he won the ball, he won two free kicks, and I don't know what more you can really ask from him. So I got older shot. We owe older shot, don't we? The end of last season was a shambles at their place. It was poor. You didn't go, did you? And no, I asked you I'm, to go. I remember you I remember you ringing me. 
and I, I was out of my car somewhere and you were crying. Well, I wasn't crying. It was that bad. I wasn't crying. <laughs> you were. I'd egg my dad on. I'd because no one no one went. Egg my dad on to come with me, and I was like, "Oh, it'd be good. It'd be good." And then that was a shambles, absolute shambles. Do you think? Look, if we if we if we want to finish top, we have to win this game, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So at home, comfortably as well, in my opinion. Yeah, and you've got you know we've already talked about Vincent Vincent being one of the the better players this season already for. Older shot not being able to play against us, it'll be a it'll be a blow to them, you know. So, um, I think that sort of goes in our favour as well, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I feel like last season, although we were really good at home, I think we've now scored in forty consecutive or more than forty consecutive competitive games at Medellin, if you include like Rochdale in the cup and games like that. But I feel like we we. <sighs> You know, when I look back, I don't ever feel that comfortable with the victories. They were nervy, weren't they? A lot of them were nervy. Yeah, no, that yeah, I I agree with you. I really do. I, there's not many victories at Medellin in in the last, I'd say, couple of years. There's probably a handful where you're thinking that was easy. You know, you, yeah. even I, and I'm not I'm not saying this to to wind any any fan bases up, but I remember Stockport at home last season. Probably one of the most easy games we played at Medellin, and then late, I think it was two 0 wasn't it? And then late on they, they get a goal, yeah, and then they get a penalty, and then we saved the penalty. Yeah, I think they, then they scored. They scored the penalty, I think, to make it two one. No, yeah. didn't, Pat, didn't Pato save it? No, that was Wrexham. He saved the penalty. Oh, was didn't it? He? Yeah, no. um, only because I watched the Wrexham one back the other day, just because. <laughs> why not? Um, no, but it did get no. Something happened. Like they, they had a, they had a chance near the end of the game. Yeah. And it was, it was like for ninety minutes we were dominating. We dominated them, completely battered them, and then it was just I, that last few minutes was just. Horrendous. I remember it very well. They scored, and then they got a corner straight after, and um. Our, do you remember Slocum basically saved it on the goal line? Yeah. It, it, that's what happened. Ruben, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Massively Thanks, appreciated. Um. Yeah, massively. Thank, thanks for that. That helps us out with uh, things like this, producing these videos. So um, glad you're enjoying the content as well. If you haven't looked at the question, it's a pretty important one. I say it's one of the most important we've ever put out. What's the correct time to have your dinner at night? Regardless of when you're getting from work, if you could make that decision, if you could work your day around it, what time are you having dinner? What time are you having dinner? What question? It's an important one. It's an important one. And if my dad's watching... Um, I I know what you'd have voted, and uh, let's say when I was younger, I, I went to bed just after eating my dinner. You know, not good for you, is it, George? It's not me. Not good. Not. It's not good. Half past nine sometimes. Disgrace. Disgrace. Um. So this older shot ones, it's. I feel like it's a banana skin. It is. A, it is a potential banana skin. If we were to slip up, I would. I would have not doubts, but I feel like I'll be in, I can already imagine I'll be in the mindset straight after the game. But I think here we go again, back to last season, react a reactionary feeling because you yeah. do well, we do well, we build up, we build up and then go and lose at home to older shot or draw at home to older shot. Last year, I remember looking at Stockport, Chesterfield early parts of the season and by sort of 50, 60 minutes, you know, they were two up, three up and they'd, they'd put the games to bed early, early on. So, how would you feel looking ahead? I don't want to be negative. How would you feel if we did slip up in this one? Um, because I, I, I'm very I'm yeah. Very no, no. I, I'd, I'd be, I'd be very deflated. I wouldn't be. You know, you, you, uh, you don't expect to be any, anyone in this league, but this is a favourable fixture at home. Like you said, we, you need to write a few wrongs against Aldershot because they did us at their place at the end of last season. Um, so yeah, no, it, we need to get a result from this game. Um, we need to show, I think now early on, I mean, we're getting into the season now, you know, we've not played loads of games, but we're getting to the point where, you know, we, we sort of talked about where you'll see style of plays coming through and, you know, the managers will have got across the points and players will be able to play the way that the manager would like, hopefully. Um, so for me, yeah, this is, this is an, it's an important game to win. I, I think. We need we need to sort of show that we can sort of bounce back from not being not being able to play Saturday and little things like that don't 
really hurt us. Do you know what I mean? We need to sh show that that sort of steel because it's teams like that that, that essentially are up there at the end of the season. Um, so for, would me, for, for me personally, I wouldn't. I would be gutted to lose this game on Tuesday. The word I would use for the last few seasons is fragile. Yeah. Like you say, little things happened and we were just completely rocked. Mm. Like conceding one against 10-man Halifax and all of a sudden the mentality is gone and we lose that game. Little things like that. I, I, I feel like, you know, you just take it in your stride if you win the league, like you say. I'm looking at this. got Dorking on Saturday. I'm, I'm fairly confident that game will go ahead despite what's going to be happening on the Monday with the funeral. I'm, I'm pretty sure that goes ahead. Dorking, Rutherford, they're their top scorer by a mile last season, sort of on, again, Langstaff and Scott standards. I think he got 20, high 20s. He's out for the season. Uh, I think it's an ACL injury. And they've, they've said he will not be back till next season. He needs surgery. You know, you get then York away. These are games we we should be winning as well. Then altering him at home. I, I personally, without getting ahead of myself, and if you're one of those, the, the four teams I've just mentioned, Oldershot, Dork and York and altering him, there's no disrespect. I... I, I I'd expect not to be winning those four games. At the very yeah. least, pick, picking up 10 points. Yeah. And then then we have Wrexham at home. So I think getting that momentum for that. But after Wrexham, look, Woking, Maidstone, Wheelstone, we've had, we've had a much harder start than, than I think we've given credit for. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Very hard. And, um, and we've, we've done very, very well, really well. Um, I mean, I think the only real disappointing result and performance probably against uh, Gateshead away wasn't it obviously neither of us was there but I was listening along to that and it was just awful it just sounded mm. awful and frustrating yeah but you know we didn't lose and that was important because I think that is probably one of those games last season that we would have lost yeah Ruben says I'm a Forest fan who enjoys watching County I think County are really missing a defence that is steady Forest are the same this season with shaky defensive mistakes Two clean sheets on the bounce though for George, uh, for his George. That's what that's what I you know I've got written down here that I want to talk about, and that's led us nicely into it. Two games where not really troubled either at all. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine like if we got if we want a third clean sheet? Have we ever done three clean sheets in the national league? Uh, I, can't, I can't put my finger on it. No, I I I don't think we have, have we? No, Some, someone's probably going to come in now and say it, but we went on that little run, didn't we? Where we was it, we didn't concede at home. Yeah, we went for, ages. Uh, it was like six games. Yeah, coming on six games. Well, that was just home, wasn't it? Obviously, we were conceding away then. But I yeah. mean, yeah. So, yeah, I think the defense at the minute we're going through a good spell. If it continues, it then it starts to become more than just a spell. It starts to become something we've instilled. Yeah. Um, Chris as well said, Rutherford's injury caused by Dawkins' pitch, I believe. I've heard a lot about their pitch. I don't know if it's artificial. I've heard teams. Yeah. I heard Chesterfield. Chesterfield's man. I don't think it's not the manager because Paul Cook never comes out and speaks after games, does he? It's their assistant. Um, I heard him come out and say something, something along the lines of they're happy to get off that pitch without injuries. That doesn't bode well for Saturday. I'm not. I'm not best pleased with that. If we come away with an injury from that pitch. No idea what the state of it is, but yeah. Before we look ahead to our team then, Casey says, famous last words, it's struggled to see where our next defeat comes from. Wrexham, okay, great side, but when they've played sides, they're pressed in this year, they've struggled. For example, the one-one with Yeovil. Um, I, I agree, and I, I really don't want to get ahead. I really don't want us to, as fan base, to get ahead of ourselves because we've seen that before. Stockport fans were celebrating they won the league and they almost lost it. It went to the final day. Yeah. So it, it all like it can come back to haunt you. And that's why I don't like seeing any fans, not fans or any fans, when you win a game or when another side loses a game, going onto their Twitter or their Facebook or their YouTube and putting a comment about it because it comes back to bite you. We can't get ahead of ourselves because, like you said, the other, it, the other, the other season, last season, six or so home games without conceding a goal. You'd think you'd, if you said that, you know, or oh, at one point this season went to six current games without even conceding, you'd think we'd have been close to winning the league. Yeah. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Miles you know? off it. So we've got it. It's literally cliche game at time. Game yeah, exactly. Time. Exactly. And as much as I do agree with what Casey's saying there, um, I've just watched Knots for too long now. 
and don't get me wrong, things feel different at the minute. It feels like we've got a good manager, good squad. Um, yeah, I think things are just a lot better in every way. You know, I feel like the fans are un- unified as well, united with the club, the players, the manager. And you know, we had a bit of a blip, didn't we, at the start of the season against Chesterfield? But yeah, I think it's been put to bed now. And you know, everything everything's well. And you're obviously going to be high on confidence when you've just won five now. They've had a very, very, very hard start to the season, older shot. They started with Solihull. They've had they've already played Solihull, Chesterfield, Boreham Wood, Bromley, Oldham, and Barnet, who were flying. Maidstone's in there as well. That's that's the hardest start you could have. Anyone. First three games, Boreham Wood, Chesterfield, Solihull. Hardest you can get. Yeah. But what I see is we are now a free score inside. We've got Langstaff that can score. We've got Scott. We've got Cairo. We've got Ruben. We've got like we've got so many players that can score goals. They conceded four to Solihull. They conceded three to Maidstone. They conceded two to Oldham. They haven't yet kept a clean sheet in any games. And conceding three at home to Maidstone, that defence is to be got at 100%. Now, with with that, with with the, the games they've had, I think they can't be underestimated. It's not like they've they've played weaker teams. They've been close in some of those games, you know, 1-0 losses to Chesterfield, 1-0 to Bromley, 2-1 to Aldershot. There's been games where they haven't um, they haven't necessarily been battered, but the last result was a 3-1 win against Barnet, who were at some point flying. So that's the only thing to look out for. Um, and do you know what? They've got in the FBL. And he'll just... Oh, he, don't. Uh, exactly. Don't. He, he scored in that woke, woke in disaster, didn't he? He did, yeah. That yeah. was awful, that was. Yeah. Anyone but him, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I, f- I feel like, you know, stick Aidan Baldwin on him. There you go. Your dog's having a lovely time behind you. Yeah, she's flat out. Some stretches. Just took on a good walk today. Relax. Lam- Lamley Dumbles. Loved it. Lamley Dumbles. Is this the new channel mascot then? We'll see. Go, going forward, we'll see. Because the behaviour you know, been... She- Impact. If she stay, if she stays like this, she can without a doubt be the, the channel mascot. That's no problem by me. If anyone would like to sponsor her, George will shave your name into the side of her fur. And my head, like there. Yeah. There you go. Sponsor George and George's dog. There you go. And get your name on the dog's coat. There we go. Love um that. Rupert says managers will put out their best team, if not play, hopefully. Um win and maybe look if they don't if they'll get sacked well uh callum driving home but tuesday's prediction is a four nil with chicks and hat trick and job screamer let's go to our team because that brings it into would you play jim o'brien let's see george i'm going five at the back again yeah slocum in goal yeah chickson left yep. wing back aaron the man right wing back usual back three brinley on the right baldwin in the middle and Cameron on the left. Yeah, I'm exactly the same as far as that part of the selection goes. But wait, what what formation are you going for? Five, two, two, one. I went five, five three, two. two. One. Yeah, I went five, three, two against Dagenham. But I think five, two, two, one. We can afford to be a bit more attacking here. Okay. Okay. I was going to go five, three, two. Perhaps not that indifferent, really, but. Um, I'm going to say Palmer, Bajrami, and Ruben. Yeah. Up top, I'm going to have Scott and Langstaff. I'm going to go Palmer, Bajrami, Ruben in front of them, and he's playing behind Scott and Langstaff. I think for me, at the minute... Yeah, it's exactly the same score. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Um, like Chris says, the only debate is Job or Bajrami. Home game, when are you going to dominate? I've already said I want Bajrami to play in that. I think okay. if that's if that's an away game and it's someone a little bit tougher, so poss- or even an away game where we want to be a bit a bit tighter, possibly York, I think for me you swap Scott out and you put Austin in just for the legs. Um, but th- that's as strong as you can get. That's as strong as you get. Ruben safe. I think Austin needs a look in. I agree. Um but I feel this is a game where Scott and Langstaff could have opportunities, 100%. Do you know what, as well? I think it says a lot. Like, throughout the time of us doing sort of match previews and, and things like that, 
it's very rare that we always seem to sort of agree on the same squad. And I feel like recently we have done that. Mm. Do you know what I yeah. mean? I think that sh- I think that says a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it does. And everyone seems to everyone seems to be picking the same squad. But Williams is putting a few surprises in there. And this is the first time I've seen a manager put surprises in there, and they actually they're working every time, and no one can disagree. Like, yeah. like you like you said, there there'll be many many people saying why is Job playing over Bajrami on um, the last Saturday against Dagenham. There'll be so many people saying that. And look, we've been literally been made to eat our words. I yeah. I questioned it. I questioned yeah. it. But yeah. five nil. What what more can you want? Three up by half time was it? Yeah. Langstaff hat trick. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see. If this is Langstaff for the season, or he's going to slow, he's going to surely go and slow down. He's not because at this rate he'll end up with more goals than games, which is just not going to happen. No, I don't. I don't think there's not many players ever done that. I think the record is Ricky Miller with forty at Dover. Yeah, I saw was that it Dover? Off, off the line blog. Yeah, not might not have been Dover, might be someone else, but forty goals and didn't even make the playoffs. So. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how many how many Langstaff scores. I said at the start of the season, I think he'll get twenty plus. I've changed that now. I think his target is now thirty, personally, and I think that's a realistic target. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I don't. yeah. Um, Alan says I go for Bajrami in place of Job due to older shot playing long balls with runners onto knockdowns. Yeah, Bajrami offers that bit more physical presence, doesn't he? I think I think we can just. I think we with Bajrami in the team, I think we can be more willing to attack because I feel like he just offers cover more than more than Job would or more than Ed Francis would. Not to mention his balls over the top. That oh, that ball over the top, which Scott latched onto and should have shot. What a ball. What a superb ball that was. Yeah. Really good. Um, should we go with the poll then, George? It's quite a it is yes. a, it's an interesting one. Let's go for Probably. it. What is the correct time to have dinner, excluding Sundays? Excluding Sundays. 5 to 6 p.m., got 42% of the vote. 6 to 7 p.m., wins the vote at 47%. 7 to 8, got 11%. And after 8 p.m., get 0%. That's the first time I've ever had a 0%. That's that's phenomenal stuff. Ever. That's what phenomenal. did you vote? Um, 6 to 7, but I normally have my dinner like a bang on six if i can help it but it normally does go over like, so between well, like six and quarter past i i i usually have it on average about half six seven yeah i think seven o'clock good time so you're not too hungry after you know after eight o'clock sits heavy on your stomach for bed doesn't it yeah. just, just too much if you've just joined us i see a few people just joined us this is as good as it gets. The content. This is. It's, it doesn't get yeah, much. This better is. This, this is Pete Pavers' perspective. This is. This is. This is the Pete Pavers' perspective. Um, and there's a massive debate going on in the chat earlier on: dinner or tea. It's it's dinner. It's dinner. Ellie said something. I, I'm not. Some, I'm not too stuck on it to be honest. Tea, yeah, something I, I, you drink. Do you mix them up? Yeah, I say both. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How, how do you? How do you not get a bit of confusion in your household? I like a bit of confusion. Keeps everyone on their toes. Do you know what I mean? There we go. Unbelievable. Mix it up. Tactical genius. Um, right. Score predictions. Get your score predictions in for us. Older shot at home has to be a win. Has to be a win. Because other sides around us, Solihull, Rex and Chessfield will pick up points. And we have to keep winning for when they don't pick up points. You know, we have to be that side. Last year, teams picked up points when we slipped up. Let's pick up points when they slip up this time. And I agree with Ruben. You're disgusting, George. Yeah. There we go. Some interesting points coming in here. Tea, dinner if you're eating out. No, if I'm eating out, I'm going out for a meal. I'm going out for a meal, regardless of the time. It's posh that is. Going out for a meal. Dinner if it's cooked, tea if it's sawn in. I quite kind of agree with that one. I uh, quite I agree with that. I think right. Let's what go, George. You, what if you toast the sarnie? It's a toasty. Yeah, exactly. Is that is that still tea or is it dinner? That's a snack. It's not. It's still a sandwich. It's just been warmed up. 
<laughs> it's that supper. Okay, okay. I'm skipping dinner and having supper. Right, come on. All right, sorry. Come on. You're getting carried away here. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the, the question is too political. It's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, it's far too political, really. Yeah, it is. Go on. What score prediction? Yeah. Oh, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. I'm going to go for another clean sheet for Knots. 3 0. Langstaff to get one, Scott to get two. Fair enough. Be good for Scott to get a couple. It would I be think good. So. I think so. I'm going. Um, I'm not going to get too carried away. I'm not going to get too carried away. I'm going to go 2 0. But I think it needs to be a comfortable 2 0. And I'm going Langstaff and Scott. If Langstaff keeps scoring, you know, it would be great. Um, before I pull up there, before I pull up everyone else's predictions, that's interesting. What what would Tom what when would you have had dinner if the Bromley game was on? That's a fantastic question. Well, what would you have had it at the game? Oh, that's a really good question. You've got me. Twenty past five kickoffs. They're a nightmare. I'd have probably I'd have probably just had a late lunch. When I, it's difficult because it's my, when you got my Saturday was a busy one. It was my sister's party on Saturday. It's for her birthday, so I'd have been going straight to a party. So I'd have had to done done something pretty drastic. I'd have probably had to go out for dinner after the game. Pack it a monster munch for your tea. That's yeah. what it would have been. Monster right. munch on bread. Maggie says 4-2 knots. I'd have liked that. Rupert says 2-1 Langstaff and Jim. Dan says 3-0. Chris, confident. 4-0. Maka 2 in the main and Chickson. But can't forget, Chickson, Chickson could possibly score again. He's got that little bet with Luke Williams, hasn't he, that's not to be told the total of, but he's, he's already got a couple. 3-1, 2 for Langstaff, 1 for Chickson. I'd love another clean sheet. Charlie says 6-0. Maka, Scott and Cameron. Ellie says, I want 6-0, but I don't. if we don't, I want a refund. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. 3-1, uh, Langstaff 2, Chickson 1. So much positivity. 2-0, Langstaff and Ruben. I'll do, I'll do two more. 3-1, not Maka, Scott and Ruben. And Ellie says, however, I'll take a 3-0, Austin, Langstaff and Scott. Fair enough. Fair enough. Some people are saying seven. Some people are saying seven. That's too much. That's too much. Um, yeah, positivity is obviously massive. Um, it'll be good to, to keep the momentum going. Hopefully, we can get that win before two away games against Dorking and York. If we can get that win, you know, I'm hoping others drop points and we can start to climb the table. It doesn't feel like we've been first in the table for a long time, does it, George? We've rarely been first in the table in the National League. Yeah. yeah. Very rarely. But Very uh, let's rarely. see. I hope we can keep it going. And with this squad, I believe we can. If you are going to Medellin on Tuesday night, enjoy the game. Um, and hopefully we can pick up three points ahead of a long trip to Dorking. As always, please don't forget to like the video, comment any more thoughts and subscribe to the channel.